Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Alright, so for today, let's start our lecture by chapter 1. The topic is physical quantities and measurement. And here we have two subtopic. The first one is dimensions of physical quantities. Then the second one is scalars and vectors and the time suggested for this chapter is 30 minutes only all right okay so let's start by the first subtopic which is uh for our lesson one according to the learning outcome student should be able to know what is the definition of dimension and then determine the dimensions of derived quantities and verify the homogeneity of equations using dimensional analysis. Alright, so we need to know what does it mean by dimension and then how to determine the dimension for any derived quantities and then how do we check the equation? Is it correct or not? Okay, using the dimensional analysis. Okay, so what does it mean by dimension? Dimension is defined as a technique or method which the physical quantity can be expressed in terms of combination of basic quantities or a measure of physical quantity without numerical values. Okay, what do we have? Just a symbol only. Okay, or in simple words, the dimension of a physical quantity indicates the way it is related to the basic quantities. Okay, so we need to start by the basic quantities first. What is that? How many basic quantities do we have? Alright, so the symbol of dimension is quite simple. We just take out any physical quantity with a square bracket to be like this or maybe by using its symbol only then we just put a square bracket for example dimension of mass so dimension of mass should be like this lah eh, we just take out mass and then put a square bracket uh, this is the dimension of mass or maybe by, by using its symbol only which is dimension of mass. The symbol of mass is M. Still the same lah. Okay. Or maybe uh, we are discussing about dimension of velocity. So it can be like this lah. Take out a square bracket. Then we just put okay, velocity wording here. Uh, so this is dimension of velocity. Or maybe by using its uh, symbol. So dimension of velocity uh, equals to. Alright, so this is the example lah. Okay, the symbol of dimension. So, it must be in square bracket. Alright. Next, we just go to the basic quantities. How many basic quantities do we have in physics? Alright. So, according to table 1, there are 6 basic quantity. Alright, we just start by mass. Eh? Or the symbol is M. So, dimension of mass is capital M and the SI unit is kilogram the second basic quantity given here is length or the symbol is L so its dimension is capital L and the SI unit of length is meter all right the symbol is M next basic quantity is time or its symbol is small t so, its dimension is capital T. Alright, and the SI unit of time is S, stand for second. Alright, next, electric current or the symbol is capital I. And its dimension is capital A or capital I. Both accepted here, okay. And then the SI unit of electric current is capital A stand for ampere 
next temperature or its symbol is capital T so dimension of temperature is theta and its SI unit is capital K representing Kelvin okay and lastly the basic quantity given here is amount of substance or its symbol is capital N all right so what is the dimension of amount of substance okay still capital N and the SI unit of amount of substance is mole all right so this is our basic quantities which is six of them eh, which is mass length time electric current temperature and amount of substance so you need to remember the dimension which is capital M okay capital L capital T capital A or capital I still the same accepted here theta also capital N alright so this is the dimension of basic quantities that we have in physics alright next how about the dimension for any derived quantities? Okay, the dimension of derived quantities may include few or all dimensions in individual basic quantities. Okay, in simple words, the combination of basic quantities producing our derived quantities. Alright? Okay, now, according to table 2, okay, the example given for our derived quantities and we need to find its dimension lah. all right the first one is area so what is the dimension of area l square how do we get this all right it's quite simple so normally for the area for any square area okay the equation is area equals to length times length okay uh, let's say this is the area square area so the length of each side given is l isn't it so the area now is length time length which is l time l all right so area equals to l times l so what is the dimension is quite simple dimension of area equals to dimension of l multiplied by dimension of l Okay, so as we know, length, okay, its dimension is capital L. Okay, times, okay, another L, still the same, capital L, which is length, isn't it? So that you will get L squared. So this is the dimension of area. Okay. Next, volume. Okay, what? Is the dimension all right L cube still the same lah and how do you calculate the volume all right so let's say there is a cube given where okay this is the cube where each side the length is L L L and L so how do we find the volume okay volume equals to L times L times L, isn't it? So that the dimension of volume equals to dimension of L multiplied by dimension of L multiplied by dimension of L giving you, okay? L times L times L. Remember, this is length, okay? So dimension of length is L, all right? Uh, so by having that, you will get the dimension of volume equals to L cube. Okay, next example, velocity. So, the dimension of velocity is LT to the power of negative 1. How do you get that? Alright, so remember, what is the equation of velocity? Velocity, the symbol is V, right? So, as we know, the equation of V, V equals to S over T. And the rate of displacement, isn't it? So, that dimension of V 
equals to dimension of S divided by dimension of time. Okay, as we know, displacement is under length, so its dimension is capital L. And then, the time here, the, its dimension should be capital T, giving you LT to the power of negative 1. So, this is the dimension of velocity. Okay, next. Acceleration, still the same. Acceleration is the rate of velocity, isn't it? Alright, so, okay. Let's do it together. So, acceleration. A equals to V over T. Dimension of acceleration equals to dimension of velocity divided by dimension of time. So, as we know, the dimension of velocity is LT to the power of negative 1. And then divide by time, its dimension is T, isn't it? Giving you LT to the power of negative 2. So, this is the dimension of acceleration. Remember, it must be in square bracket. Okay, and then for any dimension symbol here, we cannot use any square bracket. And for example, by having something like this. L T negative 2. Okay, it's wrong because we don't have any dimension for dimension. Okay, redundant already. Alright, so for any dimension symbol, we need to use a normal bracket. For example, L T negative 1. Okay, this one accepted lah. Okay, uh, so remember for any uh, dimension, Okay, we cannot use the square bracket. Okay, alright. So, acceleration is LT to the power of negative 2. Next, energy. Okay, its dimension is ML squared T to the power of negative 2. How to get that? Okay, take out the question of energy. Any energy. Let's say U. U equals to m g h so dimension of u which is potential energy equals to dimension of mass dimension of gravitational acceleration and dimension of h all right dimension of mass is capital m okay g is gravitational acceleration so acceleration its dimension is l t to the power of negative 2 and h is under length isn't it so length okay its dimension is capital l so that you will get m l and l giving you l squared and then t to the power of negative 2 so this is the dimension of energy lah which is the potential energy okay uh, so see remember square bracket for any physical quantities only by having any sim dimension symbol okay we need to use a normal bracket okay don't ever use square bracket here it's wrong okay all right settle we just go to the next page okay dimensional analysis what is that dimensional analysis is a technique to check the correctness of an equation or to exist in deriving an equation. Okay, for example, by giving you an equation, how do we check the equation is correct or wrong? So, by using dimensional analysis or maybe by giving you some factors influence something, then how do we derive the equation? Also, we may derive the equation by using the dimensional analysis. Okay. Alright. So, the uses of dimensional analysis are The first one is to determine the unit of the physical quantity Second, to determine whether a physical equation is dimensionally correct or not By using the principle of dimensional homogeneity And lastly, to derive or construct a physical equation or to derive a relationship between different physical quantities 
Okay. Uh, so we just give you a link here, then you may refer to the YouTube lah. And there are so many example for this. All right. Principle of dimensional homogeneity. What is that? All additive terms in a physical equation must have the same dimension. So remember, for any addition process, eh, the unit should be the same, isn't it? For example, we may total up the mass. 10 kilogram plus 10 kilogram giving you 20 kilograms, isn't it? So by having equal unit, okay, the dimension also equal. All right, uh, that is why both sides of the equation must have the same dimension. Okay, means that the dimension on the left hand side equals to the dimension of the right hand side. So dimension for the left hand side equals to the dimension of the right hand side. Wherever a sum of quantities appears, all must have the same dimension. Okay, uh, for example, by giving you mass 1 and then mass 2, we just total up the values, giving you the total mass, isn't it? So, both sides now have the same dimension because the unit also the same. And then, any exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric, or other spe special function must be dimensionless. Okay, so normally for any constant, for any number, there is no dimension. Okay, for example, dimension of 2. 2 just a number, isn't it? Uh, so, there is no dimension it just equals to 1 okay 